Hi everybody, it's Sally from Sally Stampers. Thank you for joining me today. Today I'm bringing you what I've called tea and biscuits. Um, okay, so would the, rooted in nature and nature's roots um, have nothing to do with tea and biscuits. I'm well aware of that. Um, but I, I am a typical British person and I love cups of tea and I love tea and biscuits. Um, cake probably more than biscuits but you know tea and biscuits are generally the thing that we serve if we have guests or somebody pops around you want to drink yeah cup of tea and it's just a really truly British thing um, and so I really went with a mixture of things when I made this. So first off it contains a tea bag and some cookies, of course, tea and biscuits. Um, but I also thought that when we go and see somebody in probably not the happiest of circumstances, you generally don't know what to say. And I do think that lots of people always have flowers and things like that. And, you know, not wanting to be sort of miserable and morbid, but I thought, you know, why not do something to lighten the moment? And so I thought, you know, even though it says words are never enough, because they're not, let's be honest, I think if you turned up at somebody's house with tea and biscuits, I'm hoping that that would put a little smile on their face. At the dullest of times, the darkest of hours, tea and biscuits make things better. Um, and so that's really where this came from. And obviously it is a more subtle paper. Um, but yeah, that was my theory behind it all. Probably way off score there, but anyway, I really liked it and I thought, you know what, this little box could also be used to put in um, a little pack of um, Kleenex or hankies. Um, I don't know if it would fit, actually, I've got a pack here that I always keep nearby. Um, well, it may, it may fit. It may fit, just at a bit of a squeeze at the top. If not, you could always just alter the sizing very slightly. Um, but yeah. You, you know, I just thought that would be a really nice gift, so I'll show you how to make it. Dead simple. So I've used Blackberry Bliss, Blackberry Bliss on this one, um, with the Nature's Poem DSP, which I love. And hopefully you can see here that I've got those beautiful embossed leaves. Having trouble with my teeth today, I think I might have somebody else's in. Um, but yeah, beautiful embossed leaves there. Um, this one is Petal Pink that I'm going to be using. So, oh, and if you watch Tuesday's video, my monogram notebooks, you will know that I was having a bit of a meltdown about my half inch circle punch. You'll be pleased to know I found it as soon as I stopped filming. It was in a box ready. Well, I have, um, let me just grab this one to show you. When I'm prepared to film, I have these IKEA draw separators, draw dividers, and they contain everything I need for an upcoming film so obviously you can see here that I've got some sweets going on um, and there's my circle punch and my twine and then there's obviously the, the DSP and everything that I need is all in boxes and they are lined up along my desk that way so that I can just literally pick them up and know that I've got everything inside that I need to make that project and it's just quicker and easier for me to film. Um, so yeah my monogram notebooks I went over checked my very first project that I probably made a few weeks ago now because I planned quite far in advance um, and there it was sat in the box I just didn't see it so it does now have I'll just show you very quickly it does now have the circles on <laughs> thank goodness I don't like losing things I'm terrible right back to my tea and biscuits so you need a sheet of cardstock that is seven inches by eight and a half inches and that is 18 by 21 and a half centimeters so on the short side we are going to score at one four and a half and five and a half so in centimeters that's two and a half eleven and a half and fourteen we're then going to rotate so we have the long side across the top and we're going to score at two and three quarters, three and three quarters, six and a half and seven and a half. And that is seven, nine and a half, sixteen and a half and nineteen centimetres. Take that out. Hang on to your scoring tool though, because you're going to need it. You also may find it easier to use your stamping pad because I have found as you can see with my little I don't know if you can see those <laughs> I found this is so much easier when you're scoring off your um, scoring board so 
what you need to do now is in these two little squares here which hopefully you can see these two little squares here we are going to um, mark them because we need to create this little bit here and so what you need to do is obviously I'm using um, inches so my gap here is one inch so at the top in fact let me zoom in slightly this is where I forget to zoom back out and you're shouting at me saying we can't see but I'll try and remember um, so my my top of my box here look my grid I'm going to mark there in fact I'm going to use the narrower end at half an inch so I've just got that little mark there and the same on this side half an inch I'm then going to do a straight line with my ruler and again half an inch so let me have a quick look for, so for your um, centimeters did I write this down let me have a look so you will need It will roughly be about one and three quarters of a centimetre. That makes it really awkward. I know 1.7, 1.8, something like that. So I've now got these two lines. I'm going to do exactly the same on this one, otherwise I'll forget. So we now have, I'm hoping you can see, two little marks which are centre. So what you need to do now is join those up with your ruler, just from the top to the bottom mark, then from each corner to the lower mark you just need to score again both sides okay so you get that not brilliant but you get that shape and then we'll do the same again on the side so I'm going to score from one point to the other and then from the corner up to the point I'm going to score again don't press too hard because you it's possible you may go through on here so that's that bit done so I need scissors and my bone folder so I'm going to fold and burnish all of our straight lines I love this petal pink I just think even though when I first saw it I thought oh it just looks like it just looks like a dirty pink but you know the more I've used it the more I've decided that actually I do really like it okay so there we have now our folded and burnished box so bottom right corner we can get away cut away completely so straight up there and then just a bit of a wedge into that corner and then just simply cut straight up here so you've got the bottom parts I told you I'd forget that's a good job I looked isn't it then here's your box cut away this bottom right corner and then you're left with your bottom flaps for want of a better phrase turn it over so that you have it this way on I'm grabbing my big scissors for this because I find it easier and again just a very small wedge out of here and then I'm cutting all the way across just to the very last one trying to do a straight line and I'm not doing it very well I'm afraid today don't know why and then straight down here so that is now how our box should look now before I forget before I go any further this is obviously going to be that that front bit here so we need to round these edges at this point so I've got my detailed trio punch which I'm simply popping my box into and just doing those two corners which makes it just a little bit prettier okay so this the bits that we scored by freehand if you like will actually go the way you want them to by themselves so you don't need to sort of start folding and trying to move it now but what we need to do is add our DSP so you will need and I've just realised I haven't done a bit for my lid I'll just grab some out of my pack so we have two pieces for front and back that will be two and a half inches by three and a quarter inches and in centimetres that is 8.5 by 
which we're just going to stick on. That's run out. Good job I keep a spare. So I'm just going to pop that one on there. And the same one just to go on to the back. And again, I'm doing all of this before I adhere the box, just because it obviously is easier to put these on when your box is flat. And then for the side parts, I have two little strips that are three quarters of an inch by three and a quarter, and that is 8.5 by two centimetres. I just need to try and line this up with the top and bottom of the others. And then for the lid piece, which I haven't done because I'm rubbish, <laughs> grab my trimmer. Put that to one side a moment. So for my lid, you need a piece that is two and a half inches by one and a quarter inch. And that is 3.5 centimetres by 6.5. So I'll move all of that out of the way. Don't forget to round your corners if you've rounded the corners on your box, otherwise it may look a tad silly. Line it up. That one didn't do very well. Let's try that again. That's better. And then we're just going to stick this onto the lid. And that just goes on that part there and then obviously we just need to seal it up here so back in again with my tear and tape which I am coming to love very much because it has that lovely straight edge so you can get it pretty close to where you were uh, your edge of your boxes etc so that they get a good good join now before I seal this bit, I also want to put some on the inside. So obviously I need to know that this is the front. So this panel is the one that will go down last. So I'm going to put some on here too. And just put two little strips on. And then and obviously we're going to take the backing off of these ones. Why is that not sticking? Oh my goodness. Come on, thank you very much. And then we'll just do this one. Which I'm just going to fold over and join up. And then as I said, we're going to pop these two side pieces in. This bottom one, which will be the back, leaving the front as the last one. And then again just take backing off tear and tape and put this one in place too and then as I said these side bits now you've got that box shape if you just very gently push that top part in they just fold straight up and again with this one it just folds naturally let's get rid of that rubbish so next up I need my velcro dots which I just love let's pop my team biscuits inside and these again I just got off Amazon um, I got four packs actually so there's one in there and there's actually two more over on the side but I don't think they'll stay there much longer so tea bag biscuits and then clothes now what I did find was if you just use your bone folder and just gently curl this a little bit it doesn't sort of stand out quite so proud when you close it it sort of moulds around a little bit better so again velcro dots again off delightful ebay top and bottom and then I just dropped that on there make sure when I close my box it's all straight Give it a good press and you're not going to damage it by pressing it hard and then there you have your velcro and then just to decorate i have some of the lovely nature's twine in 
believe this is rich raspberry. I'm just going to make a small bow. I say small, it's gone a bit crazy big, but just a small bow here, which I'm just going to trim and use a glue dot as my piercing tool. Just use a glue dot in the centre there. And then to put my sentiment on, again I have one of the lovely leaves trinkets. And I also have, and I will do one just to show you, although it potentially will take a bit of time because I have done them ready. Um, I've used the beautiful embossing mats to create two leaves. Um, I'll show you that in just a second because I want to do my sentiment first. So again, words are never enough. Unless that's the right one. You can obviously choose whichever sentiment you feel serves whatever you're gifting your box for. Um, Blackberry Bliss. Or was I going with Petal Pink? Mm, petal Pink, I think, if I can grab it. So just using my Petal Pink on here. Is that bit done? Move those out of the way. And then just bringing in my trimmer here just to trim that down. That's actually not very straight, is it? That's never fun when your words aren't straight. Oh my goodness. I'm trying to line it up here with my um, guard, if you like, my track, just so that I make sure I get the bottom bit straight. And then once I'm happy that that's straight, I can trim the rest of it. Right, not fabulous, but I'm not going to faff about with that too much. So I'm just going to use my scissors just to trim that end there. Bit of snail, and you know that I do my sentiments like this the naughty way <laughs> by just sticking it onto my cardstock and then using my big scissors to trim it. Although now I look at it again, I don't feel this is straight by any stretch, but we'll go with it. So that's my sentiment which I'm going to just pop on there for a second because I want to show you these leaves. So with your framelits, you get these beautiful framelits. So you need the small, to, to make my leaves here, you need the small framelit initially and you need your big shot with your normal sandwich of your magnetic platform and two clear plates. And then piece of cardstock that I'm just going to cut that leaf out of. So I'm going to move that out of the way. I'm going to leave my big shot here for the moment. So move all of that. I'm going to put that away. So now I have my die cut leaf. I need my big shot platform, my clear plate. And then with the embossing mats, you get a blue mat, a grey mat and a white pad. So back into my framelits. This is the smaller one for the embossing. You have a big one and a triple one too. And this is where I have to remember to get it all right. So your die cut with your embossing bit face up. Your leaf then that you've die cut. This would be where normally you would stamp and have your image showing. So that's going to be face down because this is technically the back because you've got those lips. And you lie it onto your leaf. You then lay your blue mat over the top, praying that it doesn't move. Then your white embossing board and you run it through. And then when you separate it all, you should have a not too much moved embossed leaf. And it's not moved too much, I'm quite pleased with that one. So let me just put that 
leaf there so it doesn't get lost. Remove all of this. So you do that a couple of times and obviously that generates your leaves. I have trimmed this one, which I'm actually going to get rid of now because that one's better. Um, so I have two leaves here. Back in. So my little sentiment here, I'm going to use some mini dimensionals. And I'm literally popping one on either end. And then... I want my glue dots for my leaves. Oh, that one's a bit gooey. So I'm going to pop one at the bottom back of that leaf, one on the bottom back of that leaf. And whenever I'm using these lovely leaf trinkets, I always put one on the front and the back if I'm tucking it behind something. So we want one leaf. Oh, that one hasn't got a, a glue dot on it, obviously missed it. There it is, look, hiding. Try again. Pop that one there. And now I'm going to pop the lovely leaf trinket in between. And then this sentiment will just go over the bottom. Just like that. So it covers the base of the leaves and it obviously will hold that trinket in place because you've got that glue dot on both sides. And there are my TM biscuits. Aren't they lovely? I just think they're so cute and they would be a lovely gift for anyone who maybe was feeling a bit low or maybe needed some TM biscuits. Um, hopefully you won't need to send them and you could actually add a really nice sentiment like be strong, be happy, be you or just for you or any of these really are all wonderful sentiments but you could use any of them for these boxes. Um, all the measurements are on my blog, so the link for that is just below in the description. Um, there's also a link there for the products that I've used. They are all available in the annual catalogue. Don't forget we have a Christmas catalogue coming out soon. If you'd like one of those, let me know. Sadly, I can only send them to people who live in the UK, France, Germany, Austria or the Netherlands. I'm afraid anywhere else I'm not allowed to sell them. I do apologise. But I hope you like my project, guys, and I hope you get the chance to make some tea and biscuits for someone. Hope to see you all again soon. Bye.